Joining me now, former Secretary of Homeland Security during the Obama administration and a former Pentagon official, Jay Johnson. Secretary Johnson, thank you. It's been a year since those horrific attacks, and we've seen, of course, the, the war in Gaza since, and now the war in Lebanon, uh, the escalating tensions with Iran. So there are a lot of threats out there. The threat level is very high. Um, how well protected are Americans, uh, both overseas, diplomatic posts, military posts, other targets, and here at home? Andrea, uh, when I was in the DHS chair, sometimes I'd, I'd write these public statements myself about anniversaries and things, and spent a lot of time just converting them into plain English. And I think the next question is, we should be very clear with the public what the threat is, what the threat landscape is, what the government is doing about it, and what the public can do about it. If you see something, say something. Um, it's appropriate to be vigilant on the anniversary of October 7th, but bad things don't tend to happen on anniversaries. So by um, raising the visibility of the anniversary, I wouldn't want people to become complacent on October 8th or October 9th. This is a somewhat elevated threat environment here in the United States, and the public has a role, too. And in terms of the, the threats from Iran now, today saying that we will target anyone who helps Israel, obviously we have said, the White House has said, we are supporting Israel. They, the American um, missile defense from, from air and sea was very actively defending Israel from that barrage. Um, if I were Iran, the government of Iran, I'd think twice about provoking the United States directly into this fight. And governments, even the government of Iran, is capable of making that type of calculation. When I was at DOD, uh, I observed that even certain terrorist organizations are, are sometimes careful about drawing the United States directly into the fight against them. And so it is without a doubt a broadening, more dangerous conflict in the Middle East. Uh, we pledge to support Israel as we should. Um, but if you're Iran, you need to think twice about directly engaging the United States. I also I want to ask you about how all this is, is impact is potentially impacting the election. This is a, a Middle East crisis. Donald Trump is trying to make much of it and saying that he could solve all these wars in a day. Uh, I'm not sure how that actually lands with people, but what people are seeing is higher threats, an active war, Americans at risk. And this is at a time when you also have a longshoreman's trial and you've got a hurricane and criticism of the FEMA response. What is your assessment of all of these events outside of the control of the United States, really, that are certainly uh, affecting the incumbent. Andrea, as you know, um, foreign affairs, national security don't tend to play a very large role in the voters' minds around an election. Uh, last time, I think, national security did play a significant role. It was probably 2004, three years after 9-11. Voters seem to be focused on the economy, on inflation, affordability, uh, we, we all want to feel safe, obviously. And I think that's a looming concern for the American people. Uh, homeland security, national security, uh, the elevated threat environment, um, these are issues that are important. Um, they, they play a role, but they, don't, they have not historically played a primary role. But it's up to our government the national security components of our government, homeland security, to be vigilant, to be on the lookout. Because